Hello, my friends, and welcome to Live Inspired Podcast with John O'Leary for this week's Monday Moment. You know, we create these short episodes to help start your week on fire, baby, with a quick burst of inspiration. And I wanted to begin today's podcast by sharing, unfortunately, some bad news. But then, quickly, we're going to pivot into some awesome news and an opportunity for you. Yes, I'm talking to you right now, you to dive deeply yourself into this terrific news. So here we go. Every year, our organization partners with more than 100 organizations around the world. I'm a speaker at their conferences from maybe a dozen or so CEOs in a boardroom to 23,000 sales leaders in a stadium, from inmates and penitentiaries to physicians on grand rounds. And yet before every time I speak, before every conference we have, a long conversation with their HR director, the meeting planner, the CEO, the person in charge of the meetings to discuss their organization, their event, and eventually my role with ensuring that the meeting is successful. On every single one of these calls, I can't highlight that enough, on every single one of these calls, I hear the challenges that these organizations and these individuals within them face. These leaders share the stories of how high work burnout is today. Tell me if these don't connect with you, how high the work burnout is. Frequently, it's how low the engagement levels of the work that they are doing is. The majority share that optimism for the future is low, and that's not surprising considering for the last seven years now, historically in the U.S., for the first time ever, seven years, it has been down. We have less optimism about the future than we do pessimism for the future. They talk about the work-life balance challenges, and it's essentially non-existent that people are bringing more and more and more work home with them, that the cell phone is a beautiful invention, but it also means you are on call all the time. Because of this, relationships at home are strained. The pace of change that we're dealing with organizationally in in our own work life has never been faster in the history of the world. And unbelievably, it will never be this slow again. People feel as if they are doing more and more and more with less and less and less resources. And they are stuck doing this work, it seems, by themselves. According to one study by Cigna, 46% of us feel isolated and lonely. It's been referred to as the loneliness epidemic. And according to a recent Harvard study, one in four U.S. citizens feel as if they have no one to confide in. 25% of us feel as if the secrets that are on our heart, the dreams that are in our heart, that we have no one else to share them with. It may be one reason why 1.5 million Americans last year alone attempted to take their own life. 45,000 plus of them were lost to suicide. And not helping any of this is this chronic division that we face politically in the climate we currently have. Social media isn't always helpful with how we compare ourselves, the life that we live, to the highlight reel of those around us. And then on top of all of this, the news stories, the headlines, the cable stories, 96% of which are negative. Well, if you're like me, you're done with this. You're ready to close the book on the negativity, on the pessimism. Well, a couple of years ago, I felt your pain. I came home after a particularly difficult day professionally, shut the door, walked into my house, and it's when I saw at the kitchen table four little faces. They were the faces of Jack, he was maybe nine, Patrick, seven, Henry, five, and Grace, three. And on their faces, in their eyes, on their mouths, I noticed something quite different than what I was seeing within my own. I saw joy and optimism and peace and this ability to be content, finger painting or playing or singing or laughing or dreaming. I saw a different manner in which these kids, and I think really all kids are doing life. I saw wonder and curiosity and openness and daringness, and it triggered within me something. Man, what happened? What happened? When and why do we adults lose that carefree, beautiful, joyful qualities that we had as kids? 
And how do we return to it? Well, from that day now, about five years ago, I was set on a mission. It was a mission to discover why we lost touch with these childlike qualities and what tools we need to regain that sense of wonder and expectancy and immersion and belonging and freedom that we once had as children. Well, my friends, I am here to share that the damage to the joyful inner child that we lost touch with is indeed reversible. That that little boy, that little girl within you is itching to be brought forward back into your daily lives, not only personally, not only on the weekends, not only at night, not only professionally, but every day of your lives going forward. So now for the moment of truth, baby, it is time for the big reveal. Are you ready? Are you ready? After years of research and prayer and journaling, conversations and reflections, we've completed my newest book. The name of it is, some of you know from social media, In Awe. You voted on the cover. We listened to what you said. We picked accordingly. We picked appropriately. In Awe is packed with fresh research, with real life examples, and with my personal stories of how to rekindle those childlike qualities, and how to live into your best days going forward. I thought on this Monday, it would be cool to share a short portion from the introduction of In Awe, and then afterwards, to give you an opportunity to learn how you can order, retrieve, enjoy, be inspired by the entire book. So here we go. This is a short part. It's a snippet of the introduction. I want to share it with you today on this Monday moment. Here we go. The auditorium was buzzing. As a speaker, I've had the pleasure of presenting to organizations around the world from Southwest Airlines to Microsoft. From more than 20,000 at national sales conferences to about a dozen CEOs in a boardroom. And on this day, I look forward to talking with one of my favorite audiences, school-aged kids. I love their voices, their laughter, their zest. I always leave the room energized and reminded of how lit up for life our little ones can be. School districts typically invite me to speak to their entire school, but they also divide them into several groups based on age. First, I get the pleasure of speaking to the youngest cohort, grades one through three. And let me tell you, it's obvious as soon as they enter the auditorium, the party is on. Laughter bounces off of the walls, smiles beam from faces, energy is high, and voices are loud. When I ask a question during my presentation, they answer heartily. When it's time for their questions, they wave their hands frantically in the hopes of being called on. When it is time to return to class, they leap to their feet. A line forms by the door, and they fist bump me excitedly as they prance on to the next part of their day. One of the boys in this group pulled back in shock after giving me a fist bump. He looked at my right hand. Then he looked at my left. He stared into my eyes, held my gaze, and asked as if stunned, Mister, what happened to your hands, mister? Okay, I just shared the story of what happened to my hands. I had literally just stood in front of this boy and his classmates and explained what happened. I'd made a huge mistake. I'd blown up my house when I was nine years old, set myself on fire, damaged my body, lost my fingers to amputation, but my life was still filled with possibility. And so was theirs. Had he missed the presentation, been stuck in the bathroom, had the microphone somehow not been turned on, whatever the case, I took a slice of humble pie, I bent down to his level and I responded, well, when I was nine years old, I was in a house fire. I lost my fingers, but I'm doing awesome today. I could see him thinking about it for a moment. He's trying to make sense of this before replying. Here it was. Oh my gosh. He continued enthusiastically. We had a speaker earlier today. And when he was nine years old, he was burned in a house fire too. After a short pause, he added, You two should meet. The little boy then extended his hand, gave me a fist bump, and skipped down the hallway. I shook my head and laughed, 
another slice of humble pie. Without question, our kids may sometimes get the answers wrong, but they are eager and unafraid to ask questions, even the hard ones. They are in the arena, are we? My friends, this is a small snippet, a portion of the introduction that kicks off the book in awe. Rediscover your childlike wonder to unleash inspiration, meaning, and joy. In the pages that follow, I share how we can relearn what we once knew to be true. We can be prepared to celebrate the ordinary and achieve the impossible. We will recognize it's time to unleash inspiration, meaning, and joy by choosing to live in awe in every moment, in every experience, every day of our lives. The book In Awe hits bookshelves in May 2020, but I wanted to give you, my Live Inspired podcast listeners, the first opportunity, the very first, to pre-order copies. After all, it's through some of the incredible guests that I've welcomed onto this podcast that have taught me some of the valuable and life-changing lessons that I share within the book. I want you to visit me today, like right now, at readinawe.com to pre-order copies of In Awe today. I'm going to give you that website again. It's readinawe.com. There is no doubt that the pre-orders are vital to the overall success of books. That's true in this case. But more importantly, it allows me to provide you, my friends, my listeners, a ton of bonus content. You're going to love this. It includes today when you order the In Awe Playbook, providing hours of activities that will give you an opportunity to start implementing some of the lessons As you joyfully await, that's a key concept from the book itself, joyfully await the book you're ordering called In Awe in May. So pre-order your copies soon. Go ahead and visit me right now at readinawe.com to ensure your In Awe playbook is delivered before the holidays. What a gift. My friends, with the holidays approaching, we are all looking for just the right gift to provide family to give friends, to thank teachers with, to offer to loved ones. Gift cards, I think. Gift cards are fine. Black socks, eh, they sometimes miss the mark. I think that special guy in your life, he's got enough ties. I don't think she needs more earrings. Why not give a gift of an opportunity for your family member, your friend, your teacher, yourself to rediscover the childlike wonder so that you can unleash inspiration, meaning, and joy in life. Why not give the gift of an awe? For the next several weeks, as you pre-order your book, it's going to come with bonus material. It's going to come with a hard copy in May, no doubt, but it's also going to come today with a physical copy of the playbook to prepare you to live into in awe. You're going to love it. You're going to totally be fired up by it. It's going to allow you to raise your hand wildly and believe, like children do naturally, that the best days are in front of us, starting now, starting now. Get your copies today, again, by visiting me at readinawe.com. Looking forward to seeing you there, my friends, for this time. And until next time, keep your hands high in the air. Keep that smile broadly on your face. Keep that joy in your heart and know that this is your day. Live inspired.